Well, it looks like Alicia is settling into this European excursion with a hungover train ride from Munich to Prague. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. This was all thanks to our German associate, Sabrina, who kindly welcomed us to Schnitzel Land the day before with some celebratory champagne, followed by a reckless night of Christmas market hopping, with mulled wine being the beverage of choice for my lightweight girlfriend. I'll take my alcohol in cold form, please and thank you. And thus we set our sails to depart on the winter Europe trip of 2023. The destinations I have my eyes set on for this trip are Prague, Budapest, and Salzburg. Over the past few years, I've gotten numerous recommendations to check out Prague and Budapest in particular. And I've never been to Austria before, so I thought it was a good opportunity to check it out. Now, with trips like these, photography isn't really my top priority. I'm just looking to experience something new, and of course, I'll have my camera on me to capture anything that stands out. The camera of choice for this kind of traveling is the Mamiya 7, and I had just picked up the 43mm lens as well, which I was excited to test drive throughout the week. Spoiler alert, it did not disappoint. Part of the way I justified going into credit card debt for this European getaway was because, well, it's my birthday. Birthday? To be honest, I couldn't possibly care less about my birthday, but if it helps convince my girlfriend to fly halfway across the world to visit a new place with me, then yeah, I'm milking it. I told Alicia yesterday that when you walk around in a city like this, it just feels like you're in a Jason Bourne film. I mean, it, it really does feel like he's just gonna come flying out of a window two stories up, land on a garbage truck, assailants chasing him. I mean, it's probably because the movie was set, part of it was set here, but it's damn cool to be in a place like this. All I'd like for my birthday is to split the G. Cheers. It's gonna be a good birthday. <laughs> Would you mind if I took your photo? Yeah, you can just chill like that, it's perfect. Good morning, Budapest. Been rocking the 45mm lens a lot, which is fun. I've actually never seen a photo I've taken on this lens yet, because this is pretty much the first time I've used it, but through the little 200 some dollar viewfinder that I'm looking through, it looks pretty good. Clear skies, bearable temperatures, and some delicious AM fuel are all key ingredients to a lovely day of exploring a new city. I do that every goddamn time. I forget to release the curtain. Sunday morning in Budapest. That's a sentence I like. In my opinion, there's no better way to see a European town than on foot. Put those miles in, baby. Plus, it makes you feel a lot less guilty about that Aperol spritz you're putting down at one in the afternoon. We took a lap around the Danube River, in between the Seceni Chain Bridge and the Market Bridge, passing by the shoes on the Danube and the Hungarian Parliament Building, which is one of the most stunning structures I have ever had the privilege to look at. I think I'm turning into a little bit of like a history buff. I think I'm getting into that stage of my life where I'm going to start watching a lot of a lot more documentaries about old buildings, so hopefully, hopefully that's fine. But I, I'm actually surprised, I'm doing pretty well. I'm remembering which viewfinder to use with which lens, 
I'm remembering to focus and then look in my viewfinder and check exposure through this viewfinder. Just rangefinder think, man, it's really fun. Once we made our way to the Buddha side of the city, we walked up to the Fisherman's Bastion, which is apparently a big old tourist magnet, but it does offer some stellar views of the city. St. Stephen's Basilica is a prominent piece of Budapest and is breathtaking to view from the inside. The detail and level of intricacy is hard to describe and can really only fully be appreciated in person. And you can head up to the top of the dome too for a 360 degree panorama view of Budapest. All right, it's lunchtime, fellas. We're hitting the Christmas market right outside of St. Stephen's. Alicia's eyeing some goulash, and I'm opting for some blood sausage. Can I pit that down? <laughs> Wildly enough, I even found a Guinness vendor. Life is good. Guinness in a plastic cup. Not ideal, but we'll live with it. We got ourselves a black dog. Blood sausage, <clears throat> onions, pickles, mustard. It's good. Oh, good and messy. And when you have a girlfriend who's always a little too cold, here's a pro tip. All right, just remember if you ever find yourself a little cold in Europe, they got a bunch of markets with. Tennessee honey all over the place. Stay warm out there, folks. Cheers. <laughs> I drink this stuff by the gallon in college. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> she didn't even finish it. Come on. How do you know I don't finish shots? <laughs> One of the best ways to spend an hour of your evening while in Budapest is by hopping on board a river cruise. For 15 euros, you can set sail for prime viewing of all the amazing architecture that lines the Danube River. If you can, try to time your hour window during sunset, especially if you're a photographer. You really get the best of both worlds. I mean, this parliament building is truly one of the most absolutely beautiful buildings I have ever seen. I was surprised to hear that it was actually completed somewhat recently in 1904. The architectural style is neo-Gothic and very much resembles the Palace of Westminster, which is said to demonstrate Hungary's commitment to Western Europe. My Fuji X100V hadn't seen a whole lot of use over the past few months, so I thought I'd toss it in my pocket for this trip, and I'm really glad I did. This camera has completely replaced 35mm film photography for me, and is perfect for silly little moments that don't warrant a medium format photo. It was also great for all my low light photography needs on this trip. I wasn't able to use the Mamiya for any photos on this river cruise once it got dark out, so I set the Fuji to 3200 ISO and was able to get some solid shots.
Oh baby, it's Budapest after dark time. What do you have in store for us? A pint or five of Guinness, I hope. I kept hearing about an Irish pub known as Davy Burns that may have some of the best Guinness outside of Ireland. So I hired myself to investigate. It's a quiet, homey little place that certainly feels like an old-time pub. I think I caught the Guinness on a bad night though because it paled in comparison to the pints our next country would offer. We're not, we're not splitting the gene. Definitely not splitting the gene. Splitting the label. You, you said split the gene? I didn't say that. Head check. Decent. Perhaps third time is the charm. Split in the G. Just so everybody knows, it's a lock. I don't know what's going on tonight. One of my absolute favorite parts about traveling in Europe is the train systems. It is 100% my preferred mode of transportation. Simple, comfortable, affordable, and efficient. Plus, you get to catch some amazing views of the European countryside. Touchdown in Austria. God dang, it's good to be back at some mountains. Feeling right at home with some beautiful views surrounding Salzburg. Really pumped to be here. Been to Switzerland, haven't been to Austria. And uh, initial impression of Salzburg, absolutely gorgeous. Had to settle in with a pint, of course, at Shamrock Irish Pub. Pretty much our tradition now is new city immediately to the Irish Pub for a pint. That's the only proper way to do it. Uh, split in the G, gonna do it right this time. No excuses. Here we go. Mm. That's a much more valiant effort, but still no cigar. It happened again. All in my friends drift away, drift away. Now we're alone. I mean, it's, it's quite simple. After our semi-aggressive stop at the Shamrock, we walked through the streets of Salzburg until we stumbled upon yet another Irish pub, Murphy's Law, where I would continue my quest to split the G in our third and final country. See, the question is, do I, do I resort back to my old ways and just go for splitting the label and the logo, which is an absolute lock for me almost every time? Or do I continue with the newfound crusade of trying to split the G? Gotta be the G, huh? All right, here we go. Split that G, you fucking little bitch. <laughs> oh. I mean, can it get much closer? I decided to take the L on the night and regroup for another attempt the following day. Besides, I wanted to be feeling nice and fresh for a full day of exploring Salzburg. Oh, 
<laughs> That's the sound of morning time in Salzburg. We eventually found ourselves at the Festung Hohen Salzburg, also known as the High Salzburg Fortress, which sits atop the hill on the south end of the city. It's a great place to see all of Salzburg as well as the surrounding Alps. hot chocolate here. Give that a try. Unbeknownst to Alicia, this hot chocolate is actually a coffee with a shot of Jameson in it. Oh, do I love a good prank. Wow. It's different. It's an Irish coffee. <laughs> I was going to say that's a little different. Per the recommendation of our bartender at the Shamrock, we headed up a nearby mountain called Geisberg to catch the sunset. And in this part of the world, it's not uncommon for there to be a little oasis waiting for you at the top. Well, 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 Alicia and I have made our way up to Geisberg, which is located at the top of a mountain, just, just on the outskirts of Salzburg. 30 minute public bus ride up here, public transit, the goat, summit beer to celebrate. Oh yeah, beautiful views. The sunset is gonna be absolutely glorious. I can't wait. Uh, definitely about to load up a roll of film and shoot around this beautiful area. It's nice to get up in some snow too. I mean, look at this. <laughs> oh, that's good. That is good. Keep that beer extra cold. All right, now we're talking. I love Austria. The views from up here were all time, with expanding landscapes in every direction, and the Austrian countryside looked absolutely glorious in that late afternoon light. To top it off, this peak happens to be a popular location for paragliding, so we had the privilege of watching some of these guys do their thing as the sun slowly dipped below the mountain-lined horizon. These photos were definitely the pinnacle from the whole trip. The subjects combined with the location and that time of day with these specific weather conditions just made for some wonderful images. And I was busy putting that 43mm lens to work which turned out to be the perfect choice for this particular situation. Thank you. 
After sunset, we caught the bus back into town and stopped by Zvetle's Vestas. <laughs> that was incredibly German. Wow. All of the meals we had on this trip were simply exceptional. The ingredients seemed much fresher than anything I regularly have in America. The portions were much more manageable. And as a bonus, a 10% tip was considered to be more than appreciated. Now, before we leave this country, Murphy and I have some unfinished business to take care of. All right, my dumbass couldn't split the G last night, so we're returning to Murphy's Law Irish Pub. Happy hour, three euro Guinnesses. As deadly as it gets, I'm splitting the goddamn G. Please, God. All right, here we go. <laughs> That is good. That is good. The Salzburg Whiskey Museum is just about as perfect of an establishment that exists. Dimly lit, nice and cozy, welcoming, and impeccable ambiance. This little nook is an absolute gem, and spending an hour in there was the perfect way to end the last day in Austria. Europe has, and likely always will be, my favorite place to travel. Everything from the history, to the climate, to the landscapes, to walking down one of those old alleyways under a couple of street lights late in the evening. I love it all, and I can't wait to return in a few months' time. Thanks so much for watching the video. I want to wrap things up by thanking the sponsor, Artlist. I'm coming up on my third year using Artlist, and it has been a massive game changer for me. I am very methodical about the way I use music in my videos, and Artlist provides high quality, authentic music that is entirely copyright free. But now, Artlist is a whole lot more than just a copyright free music library. They've evolved into an all-in-one platform for content creation. Artlist offers high quality curated music and sound effects with a fantastic filtering system to help you find tunes that fit your project. They also have a library of stock footage, designer video templates and plugins, and even a video and imaging editing software. Artlist also offers five different subscription models, so you're covered no matter what kind of creative field you're in. For example, maybe you're only using music and sound effects for social content, then the social subscription would be a perfect option for you. Or maybe you're doing client work and need the full music and sound effects library along with access to stock footage then the footage and templates option might be great. If you're looking to elevate your creative work to the next level, check out Artlist and head to the link in the description for an additional two months free. 